of the New York Herald Tribune, one of America's leading newspapers, the editor and two of his principal executives, planned the fifth annual forum for high school students. This forum has brought to the United States over a hundred students from 59 countries in Asia, Europe, Africa, and North and South America. This year, the forum has invited 25 young people from the Middle East and from Southeast Asia. Each delegate was chosen through a competition held by the Ministry of Education in his own country, based on an essay entitled, The World We Want. Delegates came to the United States from Burma, Ceylon, India, Nepal, Pakistan, Indochina, Indonesia, Malaya, Philippines, Thailand, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Lebanon, and Syria. In New York, the young delegates board a transport plane for Dallas in the state of Texas. They will be piloted by members of a civilian flying organization. Later, they will visit the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Capitol at Washington, and then will be guests of American families and schools. The visitor's round-trip passage to America was provided free Some of the students are surprised to see that Dallas had so many high buildings. Starting an active day in Dallas, the visitors are on their way to see the offices of the Dallas Morning News. The newspaper's motto emphasizes its faith in truth, fairness, and integrity, and acknowledges the right of the people to get from a newspaper both sides of every important question. The delegates are interested in seeing the editorial department of a large American newspaper. The huge presses are rolling out that day's paper, and the children are anxious to see what has been written about them. They are delighted to find their pictures on the front page. Their next visit is to the Adamson High School. In the school's biological laboratory, they join a microscope class. biological laboratory, they go to a cooking class, but only the girls of the visiting group participate. Nadira Aziz from Pakistan joins in with other girls and proceeds to mix a cake American style. This activity whets their appetites for lunch. American students who usually eat at home take their guests to a popular restaurant where they meet Roy Rogers, a Hollywood cowboy actor. Cyrus Ansari of Iran joins the actors after the performance. Then Yadna Neme from Burma imitates one of the actors to the delight of the cast. Next morning, a visit to the Texas Engineering Manufacturing Company gives the visitors a chance to see how airplanes are made. The company is reconditioning a training plane for Thailand, and this is particularly exciting for Supri Prakab Satisuk and Maliwal Mojadera from that country.
nearby Fort Worth, Texas, they visit a large military air base. General C.T. Irvine of the United States Air Force welcomes the delegates. Using a globe, they show the general their own countries. Also in Fort Worth, they are taken to see some new long-range bombers. Back in Dallas again, the young forum delegates visit the log cabin of John Ryan. Built a hundred years ago, this was the first house in Dallas. Buhi Kim of Indochina and Tarani Pradhan of Nepal interview one of the city's police officers. Neiman Marcus Big Department Store is particularly interesting to the girls. Usha Roy of India tries on a dress. A trip to the Dallas County Courthouse ends a crowded schedule for the day. Judge Sarah T. Hughes of the 14th District Court lets the youngsters see the entire proceedings while a case is being tried. They meet Wallace Savage, mayor of Dallas, and are given certificates of honorary citizenship in the city. Next morning, near the city of Dallas, they take a visit to a farm for poor boys maintained by a charity organization. They're glad to see something besides city life. few brush up on their horsemanship. A boxing match is scheduled in the farm's new gymnasium. Young travelers cannot wait. They're scheduled to fly to the Tennessee Valley Authority. Before landing, they get a good view of the huge dam at Chickamauga. Landing at Chattanooga, Tennessee, the visitors are shown to the Chickamauga facilities by the TVA personnel. Officials show them how electrical loads are balanced for the various dams of the system. A bus ride takes them to the Watts Bar Dam of the TVA system. The delegates see the American Museum of Atomic Energy at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. They witness a demonstration of peacetime uses for radioactive isotopes. They also see the Great Norris Dam, which produces 100,000 kilowatts of power. Knoxville, Tennessee, the group boards a transport plane for Washington.
There is much to see in Washington, too much perhaps for the short time that the group will stay here. A visit to the Washington Monument comes first. From its top, the entire city is spread out to visitors. They can see the White House and the memorial to President Jefferson and far off the Capitol itself. A group goes to look at the impressive statue of Abraham Lincoln. One of the high spots of their stay in Washington is a trip to the Library of Congress. In this great library are stored copies of all existing books that have been copyrighted in the United States together with hundreds of thousands of volumes from all over the world. The delegates learned something of the purpose of this library, of its great service to scholars from all over America, and of its particular help to the research operations of the United States Congress. Assistant Secretary of State George Cruz McGee entertains the delegation at his home. He remarks, I understand that the students have been to New York, to Dallas, Texas, and to the Tennessee Valley Authority, and they are now finishing their trip here in Washington, our capital city. This afternoon, they've visited all of the embassies of their respective countries, and we're very glad indeed that we can see them here this evening. We're going to ask Nadira Aziz, who's a student from Pakistan, Tell us just briefly her impressions of her visit. Adira? I'd like to tell you uh, how, what impressed me most when I came to the United States on my first uh, visit to this country. As soon as I landed, there was a nice family waiting to uh, receive me. Mother and Pop, as I learned to call them, and old Mike, a mischievous little boy who was constantly putting curses on my slippers and causing them to vanish and uh, who, would, who would wake me up every morning by pulling the bed covers off me and with whom I would have a really fine time uh, mis uh, doing mischief around the house and, uh, and little Janet who was uh, a little less than my age. Well, I must say that, that the American family was such a joyous thing altogether that I wondered if the whole of America could be like this. Leaving Washington, the group flies to New York where its members will visit American families and schools. This is Larchmont, near New York City, typical of the communities visited. George Klein and his parents were host to Syed Adam Edward Hogan Shidali, the delegate from Malaya. Here in Woodmere, another suburb of New York City, Emma Garcia from the Philippines is with her young American hostess, Rhoda Brenner. Girls all over the world are interested in photographs. These probably show Rhoda's last vacation. Yadna Name from Burma plays with Peggy Scott in a nearby New Jersey town. 
Fu He Kim is far away from his home in Indochina, but he's very much part of the family of George Eveleth in Rye near New York City. In the town of Tenafly, New Jersey, Mahin Pishdad of Iran shows Sophie Seal that she's just as good at picture puzzles as any New Jersey girl. Nadira Aziz from Pakistan dines with her hosts. Susilo Sardati of Indonesia and Jim Burnham, his host, have a look at the Rutherford, New Jersey Fire Department. Music and Art in New York City, greetings are presented to Ada Kleinman of Israel. The Lebanese delegate Latifi Saad attends art school with her young American hostess Joan Fournier. In the East Chester High School at Tuckahoe, New York, Berlenti Morsi Ali of Egypt visits a handicrafts class. Avigdor Ziv of Israel interests the students of the Stuyvesant High School in Brooklyn. At another school, Meliton Salazar from the Philippines takes part in a chemistry class. Delegates from India and Nepal, Balakrishna Nair and Tarani Prasad Pradhan are introduced to a music class at the New Rochelle High School. Young Nair is the guest of James Levy of New Rochelle, New York, and Pradhan is now part of the family of Jeffrey Haas of Woodmere. student in the radio department gives them a thorough explanation of some work in progress. Watch experiments in a chemistry class. Both 
delegates and their young hosts sample the food at a cafeteria typical of those in large high schools. students are interested in what these visitors have to say about the difference in educational problems in their countries and in America. The young delegates take part in a meeting of the school council. This particular school has rather elaborate equipment with a microphone for each council member so that the audience can hear the deliberations. returned from school to the house of Dr. Joseph Levy in New Rochelle. They've had a hard day, and it'll be fun to rest for a while. Astoria Hotel on Park Avenue in New York City is the scene of the formal activities of the New York Carroll Tribune Fifth Annual Forum for High Schools. 2,000 American students are here to welcome the delegates from the Middle East and Southeast Asia. They come from high schools in the metropolitan area, and more than 100 of them have been entertaining the visiting delegates in their homes. Also present are high United Nations and American government officials and other notables. The visiting students are introduced by Mrs. Helen Hyatt Waller, forum director for the Herald Tribune. First is Yatna Name of Maymo, Burma. Then Richard Toon Noon, also from Maymo. This is Chitaranjan Amara Singh from Colombo, capital of Ceylon. And Berlanti Morsi Ali of Egypt. Berlanta is active in painting and ballet. Her fellow delegate, also from Cairo, is Hamid Mansour, active in athletics. Usha Roy comes from Lucknow in the upper provinces of India, where she attended the Lal Bagh Higher Secondary School. P. Balakrishnan Nair is the other Indian delegate. Susilo Sardadi, representing Indonesia, comes from Jakarta in central Java. Sabam Siagian also lives in Jakarta. From Iran, Mahin Pishdad shows a live interest in literature and languages. Her compatriot, Cyrus Ansari, is a student from Tehran. Farouk Saeed Hawaidi, a law student, is the sole representative of Iraq. Israel sends Adik Dorsir, born in Riga, Latvia, now living in Haifa. His country's other delegate is Ada Kleinman.
the Lebanese delegate Latifi Saad has set her heart on becoming a trained nurse. This is Syed Adam Edward Hogan Shadali of Malaya. His American friend shortened his name to Eddie. Tarani Prasad Pradhan represents the independent state of Nepal on the northeastern frontier of India. Nadira Aziz and Jahangir Mirza are delegates from the new state of Pakistan. Emma Garcia and Melitan Salazar come from the Philippines. Syria sends Abdul Kader Shikshakli, a science student. Malawal Mojidera comes from Thailand. Her family lives in Bangkok. Her four sisters and two brothers all play the piano. Malewal hopes to become a concert pianist. Also from Bangkok, Supri Prakop Santisu. Buhi Kim from Hanoi, one of Indochina's leading cities. Yanda Name of Burma opens the forum discussion. Since our arrival ten weeks ago, we have been staying with student families for a period of two weeks. And I must say that every family has done a lot to make us feel at home. And that goes for all of us here. All of us here are so grateful to the families, the friends, and all the people who have gone to so much trouble in bringing about this wonderful stay for us. And I only hope that it won't be long before we see the fruits of our efforts in a better and brighter world for us and our children to live in. I was particularly impressed by student government here. By participating in school government, I think, students have a very good opportunity to learn about their national, state and local governments. Farooq from Iraq was telling me the other day that when he was in White Plains High School, the students were working on a constitution for their general organization. Many similarities were pointed out to the national government. That, to me, is real learning. I like the idea, too, where the students in many communities actually take over the running of their city government for a day. I hope we will be able to take that idea to our own countries so that students there, too, will be able to understand the way their country runs. Speaking of science, the Rutherford High School, where Richard is staying, recently changed its physics and chemistry books for new ones and has given the 2,000 old uh, books for us to take back to Burma. Well, I'm sure that they'll be very greatly appreciated in my country. Now, we have the books, but uh, we can't seem to find any means of getting it back. There seems to be an acute, uh, should I say, budget shortage. Nobody seems to be able to think of a way. Uh, maybe somebody in the audience can uh, come up with some ideas later on, and I'm sure it'll be greatly appreciated. <laughs> We also suffer from the same lack of equipment in sports. American school spirit is so far different from ours. Each school here has its own buttons, caps, cheers, and songs. The students seem to live for the schools. All these things make you love your school much better. But all schools concentrate on teaching as much as possible. And sometimes, compared to yours, ours seem like a big information bureau. Your schools are more interesting and attractive and he felt a real school life based on students' activities. Mrs. Wallow introduces Ralph Bunch of the United Nations Trusteeship Division. Mr. Bunch has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his outstanding work in Palestine. Mrs. Waller, friends, it is a great privilege to stand before this inspiring audience. And indeed, I may add, it is a great privilege to be on the same platform with my friend General Romulo, whom I consider one of the great peacemakers of our day. And I uh, propose to speak very briefly and rather rapidly about uh, one aspect of the peace work of the United Nations. The United Nations seeks to maintain immediate peace in the world, even if that is only an insecure peace, while through long-range efforts, it prepares the necessary firm foundations 
for a secure and enduring peace. These long-range efforts are directed at all the sources, actual and potential, of human conflict and restiveness throughout the world. They seek to remove the causes of economic insecurity among peoples. They seek to improve the social conditions of peoples throughout the world. They necessarily attach great importance to human rights and fundamental freedoms for all peoples. The forum takes up world affairs under the heading the world we want. President of the New York City General Organization is Harriet Hirsch, United States Representative. Our ideals of World Federation, universal religion, and dreams of world peace never mention the state of the world now. It was only after we understood each other's basic attitudes that we could actually and honestly speak about each country's relation to the world today. It is no longer possible to exist apart from the rest of the world. America is not self-sufficient. The reason why we must help the nations of the East is that we need them. The world is too small and they are too large for us to do otherwise. Associating with these students has helped me see this. That's right. The other day, I was talking to Sil from Indonesia, and he said, and he couldn't understand some of the laws America has. American propaganda tells us that the United States is the most democratic country in the world, and that Russia is just the opposite. But he asked me, why can an American who is not a communist, who is a communist, not work in the government. We are protecting ourselves from this. Communists have the right to vote here. We invite change, but not revolution. Discussing the color situation, Mr. Nair says, In India, the federal government has outlawed untouchability. So I think we are a step ahead of you in the legal aspects of the problem. These principles are stated in our Bill of Rights. Every American has the right to have his opinion represented. Naturally, we must try to show the advocators of white supremacy why they are wrong but we cannot force them to do anything. We have plans to develop our resources and deserts by research, by irrigation, and by improving transportation. But first of all, we need peace. War brings us only destruction and disaster. We can avoid war only by creating an independent bloc combined of nations watching out for their own interests and not being toys in the hands of foreign powers. The Middle East, could produce enough to support a much bigger population than it has today if we could only get a good program started to develop our natural resources. In less than five years, 550 million people have won their freedom. When has anything so vast or so world-shaking happened in history in so short a space of time before? Resignation is no longer the prevailing attitude of the East. Hundreds of millions of people have come awake. They are conscious of their new freedom and of the power of their numbers. The East has its own ideals too, the ideals of peace among people. All the Eastern nations must be strengthened together. We need machinery and technicians, and the United States alone of all the great nations can help. Never before have the world's people been so concerned over peace. There is only one way to get it. Understand each other. Understand by traveling to other countries, by education, by knowledge. Don't think of yourself only, there is a whole world to know. Y you know, Mel, the only federation I'd ever heard of before I left home was the Federation of Malaya. When I got to America, I was surprised to see that so many Americans are interested in this prospect of a world federation. I was most impressed in this regard when we were in Washington and heard witnesses before a subcommittee of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee discuss the formation of a world government. Yours, I believe, is the first government to approach this problem with the intention of doing something about it. If you Americans will take the initiative in this, I assure you, we will forget all the criticisms we have made here and will cooperate wholeheartedly with American leadership in this field. Mrs. Wallow next introduces Senator Brian McMahon, Chairman of the Joint Congressional Committee of Atomic Energy. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the kind of forum which the New York Herald Tribune sponsors here today could happen only in a democracy. This distinguished audience has convened of its own free will 
and not at the command of any government officer exercising arbitrary power. No official propagandist in charge of spontaneous demonstrations has commanded you to come. If you had stayed home, you would not have run the risk of losing your place or forfeiting state-issued ration cards essential to your existence. You may applaud or not, just as you choose. You may leave here saying what you please, agreeing or disagreeing with the speaker. By the same token, no one has told me what to say. There is no official propaganda line which I must follow on pain of my life. No censor wielding a red pencil has passed upon this manuscript before me. The New York Herald Tribune, if it should see fit to print my remarks, will suffer no official penalty on that account. Others who may read the Herald Tribune when it is printed will not be subject to seizure and imprisonment at forced labor for possessing forbidden literature. Now here is freedom in action. We take it for granted. It has become as much a part of our landscape as the skyscrapers of New York City. The next speaker is Carlos P. Romulo, President of the Fourth Session of the United Nations General Assembly. What a picture for the world to see what we saw here today. You heard this pretty Pakistan girl here speaking what is known as the King's English. and my Filipino compatriot, I foresee will take my place in the United Nations someday. <laughs> I was foreseeing the General Assembly of tomorrow, where there will be no vituperation, no intransigence, insolence, but only friendliness, neighborliness, goodwill. Nadira Aziz of Pakistan makes the closing speech. A world in which everyone tries to understand the other, to see what makes him what he is. When he finds out, he invariably finds that the other is a lovable person with all his little faults. That is what I feel about Uncle Sam, a really lovable person, honest and sincere with all his little faults. There he is, Uncle Sam, a broad-faced, medium-sized fella, rather prosperous looking, rather broad about the waistline. His broad grin, as he enjoys heartily his own jokes, his amiable wink, as if he's letting you in the know about something profound which no one else knows. I know what he means. Thank you, Uncle Sam. You have let me see America. <laughs>